Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today I want to have a brief look at OpenSUSE Leap 15.2, which was just released. And uh, we're going to look at this from a couple different perspectives. One of these is the just the basic end user, your simple desktop computer user. But also what it appears is from the available software and the repositories that this distribution is really geared towards people involved in researching AI automation and statistics, which has a lot of interesting packages that are not my field, so I can't comment any more than to introduce this to you. So if these are things you're interested in, it might be worth jumping on over and having a look at OpenSUSE. Now, what I want to do is I want to look at how this relates to the basic user. First, let's go ahead and have a look at their release announcement, and then we can talk about uh, why it might be good for the people involved in, in automation research and maybe development, things like that. And then we'll go through, talk about the installation process and the overall experience on the distribution right now. So as far as their release announcement, you can see here that they're bringing exciting artificial intelligence, machine learning, and container packages. So if you're using Linode, for example, the 15 Leap 15.2 is now available, which is working with their, I think it's called Kubernetes. I think Kubernetes uh, platform isolation system on Linode. So this is really gearing itself more towards that type of more enterprise uh, function, which is what we would really expect to see with a company like OpenSUSE. Now, as far as the new automation type platforms, again, I don't know anything about these applications. I am simply bringing these to your attention in case you are in these fields or these would help you out. They do have a lot of uh, information about these packages. They have TensorFlow is a framework for deep learning for data scientists, PyTorch. Uh, we have Onyx. We have, is it Grafana and Prometheus? Uh, to new maintained packages that open up new possibilities for analytical experts. I also have the uh, containers, like I said, Kubernetes. Uh, this is available here. And we just have a few other items that's going to help out in the basic users for, uh, as for uh, just your, your research or your cloud or containerized systems. So there's what we experienced there. Now, let's talk about the installation. Now, I grabbed the net installer, which actually took me about 30, 35 minutes or so to install the distribution. The installer is so simple, it pretty much I had to select my time zone and my user account. Everything else was completely automated through the net installer. Now, if you don't have that kind of time, uh, I'm gonna guess that the live ISO is probably going to install a little bit quicker, being as that everything is right there already on your installation medium. I just went with the net installer because when that's an option, I like to use it. When you first boot into the system, it's going to give you the option to boot from your hard disk first, run the installation, and then run a few other diagnostics. Running the installation, you just basically have to confirm that you're good to run the install, and then you go through the entire installation process, which, as I said, is nothing more than selecting a few options. Oh, I did forget there's one more thing you need to select, and that is your desktop environment. You have a GNOME version and a KDE version. Now, one of the criticisms of Leap, which is valid in this case here, is that it does contain sometimes older software. In this case, all of the software that I looked at that I might ordinarily use was the most recent versions. We had a 6.4 on LibreOffice. I looked at the Bible Time software I'm using for my Christian studies is at 2.11, which is the latest stable. Sigil 1.2.1, which is the latest version. So everything there was up to date. However, the GNOME and the Plasma versions that you get are still a little bit older. We're running Plasma 5.18 versus uh, 5.19.2 is the current Plasma. Plasma release, and you uh, have the GNOME, I think it's 3.36, and I believe 3.38 or 3.39 are available now. I forget exactly which GNOME is, is available now, but it is still running a couple versions behind. On my installation here, I did select to go with the Plasma Edition. And uh, mostly with Plasma Edition on OpenSUSE, this is really an excellent build. The theming is just your more uh, traditional theming. It is set up and laid out pretty much exactly like a Windows computer would be. We are running the Firefox ESR. I think it's version 69. Everything else we have inside the system is what you would expect from OpenSUSE with Plasma. It has a variety of tools for... Uh, 
for plasma built into it. And my guess is if you go with the GNOME version is you're going to get mostly the GNOME, GNOME versions. So we have Kmail. We have we do have MUT for the email client there as well. We have KDE Connect. We have Aggregator. All these are tools specifically to the Qt framework, which is involved here in, uh, in Plasma. My guess is you're probably, I didn't get a chance to install it there, but my guess is if you're running with your GNOME version, you're probably going to get the related GNOME version tools. You might therefore get Evolution instead of Kmail. You might get, um, oh, I don't know. I'd have to think about the other applications we have. But regardless, uh, it does give us a system that's not overly bloated. We do have some games installed, so there's, there's a number of games, so those would be considered bloat. We do have just enough, mostly system tools involved on the system. But of course, anytime you have more of a stock plasma build, you are going to have a little bit more bloat than some other things, except who knows, maybe GNOME with extras. It's kind of like friends with pennies, right? I don't know. So anyway, uh, that's kind of what we get down here. I did install a couple applications myself. Uh, as I said, I installed... Bible time to see what version that is. That is the 2.11, which is the current working version. The other application I installed was Sigil. Let's see, I don't even know where Sigil is going to list itself. So the Sigil is 1.2.1, which again is the latest version. It's going to drive me crazy until I figure out where Sigil went. Uh, anyway, we'll figure that out later. All right, so your basic setup is the same. They give us double, uh, or excuse me, single click for desktop icons. I already changed that. Oh, never mind. I did not change that in the menus. Uh, the single click on most desktop environments, it's actually done inside of the preferences for your Windows Manager, but if you actually open up the configuration on Dolphin, it's actually not in there. This is one of the ones where it's in the generic settings. So if you are accustomed to the to the double click ones. I believe it's under Workspace Manager. Yes, it is. So you can see single click or double click to open individual files. We do have a variety of different themes. Uh, we have our basic OpenSUSE, Breeze Dark, Breeze Light. If you go into your Plasma styles though, you see we have Air, Air OpenSUSE, Breeze. We have an OpenSUSE, OpenSUSE Dark, OpenSUSE Light. So there's uh, a variety of different options that you have as far as your your basic build. Nothing too out of the ordinary, very typical for uh, for Plasma. Now, as far as running my, uh, just using the system as a basic, uh, basic platform, I do like OpenSUSE and that YAS does give you a little bit more of a, of ability to kind of understand behind the, the hood what's going on. I did actually have some issues though with my printer. And uh, let's go ahead and double check our network as well. This is again something I've generally had an issue with, uh, with, um, uh, Dolphin in the past where it just doesn't seem to like to find the files. Now I should be able to manually go to them. So if I go here, I should actually be able to actually get to them. And if I were to log in here, I'm sure I would get to it. Uh, let's in fact go ahead and go with my anonymous one, my open share. So it is apparently finding stuff. Here you can actually see that it is finding the network. It just never, and this is not open Susan, this is Dolphin in Plasma, never seems to find my network shares out of the box. That's kind of sad. The other problem that I encountered was I said, well, let's go ahead and try setting up our printer. And if we go in here and set up our printer, it is actually here. It does show up, but I have not been able to get this guy to print anything at all. So uh, there is a error log file. It doesn't contain anything that's going to be useful information. This printer doesn't work, but of utmost curiosity of curiosities, the scanner does. And that's so weird because this particular printer, which is the HLL2380DW, it is one of the most finicky printers I've ever seen. In fact, it's probably the most finicky printer I've ever seen with Linux. Yet, somehow, the scanner utility works just fine installing the drivers downloaded from the Brother website, although the printer still does not. So as of right now, the uh, printer is not working. I invested maybe about 20 minutes to try and uh, track down the error and the problems. I ran the auto configuration networking tools. It confirms it can find the printer. It just won't print. 
I'm not sure exactly why. So that in and of itself is a downside. The overall rest of it, it's pretty much what you would come to expect with running a modern operating system running Plasma. No big deals, uh, no real deal breakers to not use it other than if I needed a functioning printer. No real reason to use it over anything else unless, of course, you're going back to what we talked about at the beginning, data scientists involving yourselves and things like that. But for a endpoint user, um, I would probably say from the endpoint user, user. I had more problems getting it set up despite the installation was a breeze. A lot of the other settings were pretty much a breeze. The fact that I cannot seem to figure out what in the world's going on with the printer is to me a little bit of a, of a hassle. So overall though, it's a not a bad operating system. It's your run of the mill Linux running Plasma. Again, if it is running an older version of Plasma or an older version of GNOME, if that's a problem to you, you're going to want to skip it, go with something else like Manjaro or Arch or even Ubuntu has the latest version. I don't know why a brand new just released this week, OpenSUSE is still running an older version, but hey, whatever that happens to be worth. So there is my very brief, very abbreviated look at OpenSUSE Leap 15.2. Installation's a breeze. Most of your settings are a breeze. I had to fight my printer. Other than that, Hey, it is what it is. So thanks for coming along on this one. Thanks to the supporters who help support and keep the channel going. And uh, let me know of other distributions you like a quick walkthrough. And I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.